Hey guys, it's Rumbling Man coming to you today from Florida, and today we are going to be reviewing and doing some demos and taking a look at the Behringer TO800, which is vintage tube overdrive by Behringer. And guess what? This pedal only costs about $24. You saw the description. Let's check out how it sounds. Why don't we go on and just resort to naming names, all right? So anybody ever heard of the Ibanez Tube Screamer? <laughs> this is basically the same thing. And uh, we all know that, that many uh, versions of the Tube Screamer by Ibanez have come out over the years. Uh, but when you put it all up to each other, uh, what we have here is a very similar pedal. For one thing, it's, uh, it's green, so that's similar. Uh, like the Ibanez Tube Screamer, it's got three knobs. Uh, drive, tone, and level. And uh, with those three knobs, you can dial in a range of tones from, uh, from lighter drive sounds to heavier drive sounds. Uh, you can do a little bit of everything, and it gets really close. So, you know, this, this is kind of a neat uh, introduction to Tube Screamer uh, technology because, for instance, you know, what, what does an Ibanez Tube Screamer cost these days? What do you pay for one? $175? Uh, whereas for the Behringer TO800, you pay in the ballpark of $24. And I really like that. I really like uh, when a product is available that does the same thing and does an excellent job, but does it on a budget. And some may say, well, Rumble Man, it doesn't sound, you know, exactly like a tube screamer. Well, there's merit to that, and I see what you're talking about. I've listened to many audio comparisons and many video comparisons, and I will say this, the one that blew me away the most uh, was when somebody put one of these up against uh, the Tube Screamer Mini or the TS Mini. I found that they sounded almost exactly alike. I mean, it was almost identical, except I felt like the TS Mini had a little more presence to it and, and maybe a hint of more uh, upper range in it that I really... Uh, liked. And so in that particular comparison I saw, I did like the TS Mini um, a little more even though the differences it would take a very discerning ear to hear. However, when I've heard this up against actual, you know, full-size Ibanez Tube Screamer pedals, I've actually liked the Behringer a little better. Whereas the uh, Tube Screamer pedals might, might have a little more punch to them, um, the Behringer has a brightness that the other Tube Screamer pedals by Ibanez don't exactly have. They're very warm sounding pedals. And this is warm too, but I like the brightness and bright edge that it has to it. Because when I'm playing electric guitar, you know, with overdrive tones, um, I like to have brightness uh, in my distortion so that it cuts through the mix very clearly. That's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, so it's interesting when put up to an Ibanez Tube Screamer, you know, I, I could hear I could hear the quality difference, but you've got to really listen closely. You've got to really discern. Uh, but I'll tell you, it is so very, very, very close. And it's very, very close, in my opinion, to the TS Mini, uh, just how close this thing gets. And you know, I just love some of the sounds you can get from it. Check out this other demo real quick. I'm going to grab my uh, Fender Stratocaster and do some bluesy play-in and show you some of the cool light drive sounds that you can get with this pedal real quick. <laughs>
Behringer actually put original 4558 OP amps into this thing. Not only that, but they put the legendary MA150 uh, distortion diodes into this pedal as well. So essentially, a couple of the key components that you find in tube screamer pedals, you find them in these pedals as well. They knew that that's what they needed to get close to the same sound. A lot of opinions that I've heard say, yeah, the tube screamer is more warm and the Behringer is more bright, like we talked about earlier. I personally like that brightness. I don't necessarily think that's a con. Other people say, oh, cheap plastic construction. Oh, so lame. But actually, honestly, I, I see what you mean. It is plastic. I wouldn't say that it's cheap construction, however. I think that's a little bit uh, of an extreme term. The on and off switch that Behringer used is what they call their top quality on and off switch. So to shape the tone that you want, uh, we have a drive knob, a level knob, and a tone knob. And obviously tone is, uh, in, if, if you're new to uh, you know knobs and what they do on pedals and amps, tone is not a whole lot different uh, than what the tone knob on a guitar is going to do. I mean, over here you're going to have you know, the warmer, bassier sounds, the low sounds, and over here you're going to have the higher, uh, crispier sounds. Let's do another demo real quick, and in this demo I'm going to use a Fender Jazzmaster, and uh, I'm going to do two tracks. One of them I'm going to use maybe, uh, maybe both pickups or something to that extent, and then on the other one I'm going to use the bridge pickup, and then I'll, I'll vary the knobs very slightly, but what you're going to see here is I'm going to use a lot of tone and a lot of drive and uh, try to get some rock sounds of it and let's see if we can get some real nice uh, cutting edge um, high rock tones out of this pedal real quick. We also have a red LED light uh, to show when it's activated. Uh, Behringer makes a power supply you can use, but quite honestly, I've been powering it today with a uh, visual sound uh, one spot, and I did hear that visual sound is no longer visual sound. But you also have the option of a DC 9 volt battery. And one thing that people have been complaining about about this pedal that some see as a con uh, is that you do have to screw it open in order to change the battery. Whereas, you know, some of the more classic pedals, you don't exactly have to take screws out with a screwdriver. That said, you know, the cons that I've read uh, from people's opinions and the things that I've heard people complain about, about this pedal, to me, they're not that big a deal. I mean, so what if it's plastic construction? I can buy two or three of these for less than I can buy one Tube Screamer. Do I think that the sound is identical to like the original Tube Screamer? No, I don't, but think about this. It gets close, and the thing is, when it comes down to you know simulating uh, different amp effects and different pedal effects, there are a lot of people who try to simulate uh, the sound of an Ibanez Tube Screamer. In fact, another device that I have sitting right here, it actually has an effect in it that also tries uh, to emulate the Ibanez Tube Screamer. And that unit that I'm referring to right now would be the HX Stomp by Line 6. Now I am using the HX Stomp today in this demo as my interface and also for amp simulation, you know, and some light digital effects like reverb, maybe a little delay, things like that. So that's what you're hearing in terms of amp cap simulation. But the thing is, the HX Stomp, you have six blocks in the framework of it, and so you do have the ability to have some effects in it, and it has uh, essentially an Ibanez Tube Screamer uh, simulation of its own in there. So here's what I want to do real quick. I don't have an Ibanez Tube Screamer here to put it up against. There are plenty of videos on YouTube of that. But let's see just how the difference in sound is between two different pedals that both kind of simulate uh, an Ibanez Tube Screamer. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, put the uh, Tube Screaming effect on in the HX Stomp. And so we're going to have the knobs straight up at 12 o'clock on here, and we're going to have that same setting in the HX Stomp, and I want to see how that sounds. So let me uh, share the screen with you so you can kind of see the framework real quick of how I am uh, laying the sound out. 
So real quick, I'm going to show you the setup I'm using to record uh, this, uh, this demo using the T0800 uh, as well as comparing it um, with the Tube Screamer style distortion that we have on the Line 6 HX stop. So check this out. Right here, we're in HX Edit program that uh, is a must-have for, uh, for using the stomp. And we get six blocks, so I'm using five, all right? So here's our main guitar. That's where the guitar goes in, and this is where it goes out. Now, when it goes out on this, essentially what I have is I have a USB cable uh, running out of the stomp, and I have that running into uh, the computer here where in GarageBand I'm going to record the demo. And then what I'm doing is I have the Vintage Tube Overdrive by Behringer, and I have that routed into the stomp as an effects loop. So here's the effects loop, and if we click on it, we can see that it's just set flat, and then this would toggle it on and off. So that makes it go off, that makes it go on, and then over here we have uh, the effect in here that does the same sort of thing as the Ivan S2 Scream. And as you can see, uh, just like we'll have in the demo here, uh, the gain, tone, and level on the distortion effect are all flat straight up at five like it would be on a pedal. So essentially these turn them on and off and that's what I'll be kind of doing simultaneously uh, while making this demo. One thing to know is this is that the actual uh, distortion uh, effect that's in here is actually louder than the pedal. So while I will be doing all at five o'clock straight up noon settings, well not five o'clock settings, that would be down or to the side or whatever. I don't know how I came up with five o'clock. That was weird. But whether I'll be at straight up noon settings, I will digitally actually have to take um, the line from the computer distortion here and make it a little bit quieter because it is naturally louder than the pedal. But anyway, that's our setup. Then over here we have amp cab simulation. Um, this is kind of a British uh, plexi amp. And then we have delay, which I uh, am using a little bit of today. And then we have reverb, which I'm tweaking on and off and that is our setup for recording so let's take a listen to these two effects uh, one being the Behringer pedal and one being the HX stop uh, distortion that's like a tube screamer and let's see uh, how they sound in comparison with one another So which one did you like better? Did you like the HX Stomps uh, Tube Screamer Simulation Effect or did you like the Behringer Pedal better? Let me know in the comments as I'd love to hear which one uh, you like better. I've already been dissed uh, this week. No, get it off your board. But quite frankly, the thing is, I'm, you know, I'm still a, kind of assessing if it's a tone that I want on my board. But the thing is, I'm pretty impressed with what it does for the price. I mean, quite honestly, $24 for you to get the, the same kind of tone. You know, if you're playing in church, is the congregation going to know the difference between this and a tube screamer? If you're playing in clubs, does the audience listen with so discerning an ear to try to say, is that a Behringer uh, T0800 or is it indeed an Ibanez tube screamer? I think it's a really cool pedal. I love the color green obviously how can you go wrong so if you want to go in and get yours click on the link in this description where you can get it for around $24 today there's even an option for fast free shipping so check it out as always God bless you guys and thank you so much for checking out my video today I really appreciate it. if you enjoyed this demo today and this review go on and give me a thumbs up button and also 
if you're interested in seeing all kinds of videos related to guitar and bass uh, gear, uh, some tutorials and things of that nature, go on and subscribe to the Rumblin' Man channel as I would love to have you as one of my subscribers. You can also connect with me on social media like Facebook and Instagram, and those links are in the description uh, of this video, as well as a link to where you can go on and get your uh, Behringer TO 800. I'm on Patreon and PayPal uh, if you would like to support this channel and help me make the upgrades and time that I need to make in order to bring you the best possible content that I can. I would appreciate your help, but I know that not everybody can do that, so I'm really just here to be a blessing to you, the musicians everywhere, with this content. So guys, thanks again for watching. God bless you, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.